Hey, Schoolie Scouts. Last week I put out a video with um, three weird things that happened to me in a day in Oklahoma when I was traveling there earlier in the year. I was just playing around, you know, um, kind of amped up the, the mystery a little bit. Mysteries, mysteries, mysteries. Because I thought it was weird that these three things all happened on the same day, but really, you know, it's trying to make it more entertaining, right? But I didn't actually think that any of those things was going to turn out to be like a thing, like an actual mystery. But now this video has to be a follow-up to that video because now I know the story behind the trucks. And I kind of wish I didn't, to be honest. Yeah, I'm your hero. I ran into four vehicles. The only difference was the color. Black, navy blue, white, and silver. Each of them had a dome on the roof and a bunch of antennas and a government plate. And I tried to look them up, I really did, but I didn't know anything about these trucks except what the kid that worked in the convenience store told me, and he said that their job was to protect the transfer vehicle. So anytime I looked up transfer vehicle, all I got was information about like how to transfer a vehicle, you know, like how to transfer ownership of a vehicle. I finally just gave up and I posted the video. And then I got a lot of great suggestions from you guys, my schoolie scouts. Nomadic Foodie thought that maybe the transfer vehicle might have something to do with the president and vice president being in the area. Jan Libby, hi Jan. Jan thought that it might have something to do with the prison because there's a prison nearby, we already had established that. Susie thought that they might be puppy catchers. Those are all great ideas, great thoughts, but unfortunately they are wrong ideas. And I know that because now I know the right answer. And I got that answer from Joe Birdwell. Joe remembered something that I had forgotten. If you really want to solve a mystery, you got to go to Reddit. Joe posted a link to a Reddit. There was a, a thread discussing trucks that looked exactly like the ones in the video. So I popped off to go look at the Reddit and then I came back and Joe's comment was gone. And I thought, okay, he deleted it. I don't know why he'd do that, but you know, sometimes people do. Then I noticed that the comment was still in my notifications and that doesn't usually happen if someone deletes it. So I just sent a little reply that said, is this thread gone? And within a minute, Joe responded to me and he said, no, it's not gone. I can see it. It's right here. I could see it too after that. It reappeared on the video, but when I refreshed, it went away again. So I asked a few people, hey, can you see this comment? And nobody could see it. Joe could see it, but otherwise, yeah, it just went missing. I'm not trying to float some conspiracy theory, but well, could be a conspiracy. That would be fun. I think it's more likely to just be some kind of YouTube quirk that just picked this exact moment to show itself. This is the Reddit that Joe posted. So you can see from the picture, that's the same truck, basically. It was the same design. And the guy who started this thread saw these trucks in Wyoming. So he posts it and he says, what is this thing? And I'm excited because now we're going to find out what it is, you know? And the first person who answers says, nuclear courier, I think. Nuclear courier. Never rented my mind. Yeah, I'm your hero. Yeah, I'm your hero. Now that I knew what I was looking for, nuclear courier, I could find a lot more information. In fact, I found this job listing for a nuclear materials courier. And the organization that listed the job is a government agency I've never heard of before called the Office of Secure Transportation. That's a division of another government agency I've never heard of, the National Nuclear Security Administration. And those are both under Department of Energy. To be a nuclear courier, you have to be a US citizen. You have to be between the ages of 21 and 37, although that age requirement is waived for veterans. You have to have one year of armed security experience. You have to be willing to take a comprehensive medical and psychological assessment. You have to be willing to submit to an extensive, thorough background investigation. And you have to have a clean driving record. And I think those are reasonable expectations for someone who's going to be driving missiles on the freeway. 
take a look at the people on this page where the job listing is and then remember that my original plan before I thought better of it was I was just gonna walk up and just like tap on the window and go hey do you mind showing me your truck just like I would with any other rig I would have been met by these people and in every picture they're either pointing a gun or blowing something up and now that I'm hot on the trail I was able to find a couple of videos um, one of them looks like it's like a promo for the Office of Secure Transportation which I thought was kind of like secret but anyway they have this promo video and from that I'm able to sort of extrapolate how this whole thing would have worked the four trucks that I saw each truck would have had four federal agents inside of it each fully armed Probably one of them would be taking a nap in the back, getting ready to be the next driver, because those are basically camper shells on the back. They have a cot and communication stuff. I'm not sure the black car may or may not have had anything to do with things, but the nondescript rental moving truck, that probably contained whatever it was that was being protected. And it's unlikely that it's a warhead because a guy chimed in on Reddit who had worked for the Department of Energy and he said when they move a warhead, there's a lot more vehicles and there's a helicopter escort. And I actually found a video of that on YouTube. I'll link it down below. So you can see what a big deal it is when they move a warhead. What's probably in that truck are parts for the ICBMs, you know, maintenance things, not the actual warheads. Now there's also this police interceptor. Thank you EJFXXX for pointing that out. And it, you can see it pull up and just park. And that car was still there when I pulled out, I remember. So it's gotta be related. I don't know what its role is in the convoy, but it's gotta have something to do with it. The OST website has a lot of stuff on it about integrity, loyalty, patriotism, honesty, you know, all the virtues and well, maybe they're using a different definition of integrity than I use. The commander, not, not the couriers, but the commander of the couriers out of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oak Ridge is where they manufacture and store the uranium part of the H-bomb. And this guy is the commander there. And he apparently, on seven separate occasions, threatened the life of one of his co-workers. But nobody reported it, even though their certification requires reporting nobody above him not the department of energy nobody even knew this had happened until it had been going on for like a decade that information came from a 2014 internal report by the department of energy that was previously classified and it was released due to a freedom of information act request in the same report it basically says that a lot of the couriers most of the couriers were engaging in other activities that um should have been reported and that were kind of well, we're against the rules. Like, for example, fist fighting. Like, there was apparently a lot of fist fighting going on, like, between them. They would have fist fights with each other. And this probably goes hand in hand with that. A lot of drinking on the job. And also getting arrested in bar brawls when they're not on duty. But, you know, they're not on duty. I guess everybody's allowed to have a hobby, right? Now, you would not slap the label integrity on this kind of behavior if you saw it in... People who were employed, for example, at Home Depot. But these people are nuclear couriers. I kind of want to hold them to a little higher standard. Yeah, I'm your hero. Came from nothing, nothing zero. Whatever those couriers did pales in comparison to this next one. The Department of Energy has this thing called the Human Reliability Program. And what that is, according to the HRP uh, handbook, is the HRP is a security and safety reliability program designed to ensure that individuals who occupy positions affording access to certain materials, nuclear explosive devices, facilities, and programs meet the highest standard of reliability and physical and mental suitability. Okay, so this is a program that checks you out every so often and says, uh, maybe don't let Mary near the nukes. The person in question had been temporarily removed from the HRP, the Human Reliability Program. Now, we don't know why, because they're not going to tell us why, but, you know, we've looked at some of the other things that happened, so we probably have an idea what it might be. He has been temporarily removed, so I guess he's just got a few things to work out. But anyway, because he's not currently certified, he's not allowed near the danger stuff. This report, this formerly classified report, goes on to detail a little incident where this guy gets unauthorized access to the place where they store the nuclear weapons. So how does he do this? Does he falsify his ID? Does he tamper with a code? No, he just walks in, 
The report says that some um, OST senior officials knew that this guy was not supposed to be in there, so they called on a particular person whose name is redacted, and they asked that person to intervene. And that person responds by saying, hey, well, you know, I gave him an order. I told him not to go. What else do you want me to do? The report contains a pretty strongly worded warning that these um, uncertified agents were basically able to access any place they wanted to access and that that was going to continue if the Department of Energy didn't take some kind of action about it. I found uh, an article from 2017, an investigative report from the LA Times, which seems to be, it's the only one I can find. And in it, uh, the LA Times calls the OST a troubled agency within the U.S. Department of Energy so cloaked in secrecy that few people outside the government even know it exists. Well, now you do. Some of the problems the LA Times found were the agency's 48 agents short. Just about everybody works at least 900 hours of overtime a year. There is widespread alcohol abuse, including a drunk driving charge for the agency's highest executive. The tractors are more than 15 years old, and the trailers are even older than that. And classes in <laughs> weapons and tactics have had to be canceled because they don't have enough money. So now, instead of worrying about terrorists hijacking our nuclear warheads when they're out on the road, I'm going to worry about unbalanced, overworked nuclear couriers going postal with an unauthorized nuclear device. Great. Working like 24-7. Tell the villains keep stepping. My presence is a weapon. Yeah, a nice guy with aggression. What confuses me is, why is this happening? I mean... Why do we need 4,000 warheads? That's the first question, but let's say we do need 4,000 warheads, and we're gonna locate them all over the country. All of them are gonna need some repair and maintenance from time to time, so you would figure that the people who do the repairs and maintenance would just be on the road all the time, going from warhead to ICBM to missile, and you know, I don't know the difference between a warhead and ICBM and a missile, so I'm just gonna use them interchangeably. You're gonna to have to forgive me for that. But anyway, you would figure that these maintenance and repair people would just be traveling all the time, right? No, that's not what happens. The technicians stay in one place. The warhead, the ICBM, the whatever is brought to them. It's transported. Why? I mean, we're in an era where things are so streamlined that very few people even have to leave their house to go to work and we're still transporting nuclear weapons on the freeway. Yeah, I'm your hero. Came from nothing, up from zero. They tried to take me out, I'm here though. Yeah, I'm your hero. Yeah, I'm your hero. That last quote was from another government agency I never heard of before, the Office of Science and Technical Information, which is also under the DOE. And um, yeah, it's great that there have been no accidental or unauthorized detonations, yay. But it's the, the close calls that worry me. I think we have this picture that everything is all organized and foolproof. And one thing that this video has taught me is that there's, there's plenty of room for fools. I don't like saying that, and, and that's probably why. You know, I was just about finishing up editing this video and I realized that I was jumping through hoops not to say it, so. Now I'm shooting this part because the old ending was basically, you know, me just really trying to be solution oriented and you know what, I got no solutions for this. Luckily, I'm one of those annoying glass half full kind of people, you know, I mean, I think that it's amazing that we haven't annihilated each other already, considering how easy it would be to do. I think that proves that people are basically good. I believe that because I have to, because I don't think I could get through the day any other way. So a couple weeks ago, I introduced you to a guy who loves peace so much that he built a park around a peace sign. And today, I showed you this. Welcome to 2020, bringing out the best in us, bringing out the worst in us. And I have no idea where we're gonna land. But I do hope I can get you to land on this video though, because I think you need a palate cleanser. This video is a lot, it's a lot lighter and I, I'm curious to know what you think about it. So um, if you get a chance, just leave me a comment, let me know what you thought and um, I'll meet you over there. I'm your hero, babe.